Today on the breakfast, popular lawyer Afe Babalala proposes an interim government, says Nigeria needs new constitution, as the governor of Imo State, Hobo Zodima, says it may lead to anarchy. What is the way forward? Spare the rod and spoil the child. Who does it better? The silent generation or baby boomers? We seek answers on the best way to bring up a child on the breakfast. And we will be reviewing all the major stories making headlines across national dailies with an analyst. Good morning to you. This is The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. I am Messi Boko. It's a beautiful morning and it's good to know that you are on the other side. Um, you're part of The Breakfast. Yeah, Mercy, good morning to good you. Morning. Bright and early. Uh, today was a, a little freer and calmer, uh, uh, as opposed to what happened yesterday. <laughs> yes, maybe on your part, you know, but yeah. on my, I mean, from my access, uh, yeah, videos making the rounds about people being robbed in traffic. Oh, I whoa. Mean, the, the VGC, Major access, quite unfortunate and very sad, but we're hoping that, you know, security personnel and you know the government was swing into action because activities for a lot of persons actually start quite early apart from that yesterday was a fantastic night i know you're not a, a football lover but not necessarily that i saw the match entirely but you know the score lines was mm. uh, really really sad liverpool and man uh, man united that 4-0 game plus ronaldo in that game i mean we don't need to talk about sports but okay no we don't to need say to that this <laughs> We don't need to talk about that, but yesterday was a very interesting day, a very beautiful day. Someone practically, you know, painted the town of Oyele Green. We'll talk about that in a moment. Well, let's just slide on to uh, top trending. We'll start off with the popular uh, Facebook influencer, Ovayoza, uh, who was nabbed by the police just yesterday around Lugbe area uh, of Abuja. Uh, she was said to have um, defrauded um, many Nigerians to the tune of about three billion Naira, and uh, from what we are told, she front her storage business, you know, to use as a cover. But uh, a whole lot of Nigerians uh, fell victim to, you know, half fraud, and uh, she was trying to escape yesterday, from what we uh, read. But she was unlucky, as uh, she was nabbed. Mess a whole lot of people are still, you know, falling victims to all sorts of. Um, investment schemes, investment plan. You see uh, several posts on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, even on Instagram. Sometimes WhatsApp, text messages, people asking you to invest in some business and, and you get some outrageous, you know, return from it. And a whole lot of people have lost money, you know, all on um, this whole Ponzi schemes. And that's because, first of all, I'd say that Nigerians, we never seem to learn. Uh, that's remember MMM? <laughs> Nigerians never seem to learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't, I'm not sure we learn from any experience or all of the experiences that we have been through as a people, not necessarily as an individual, but the fact that uh, these days, the, you know, the popular thing that I used to say, experience is the best, best teacher. teacher. We have moved away from experience being the best teacher to saying that, leveraging on others' experience is the best teacher. And so why do we keep falling prey? Secondly, for me, would be the fact that I feel like greed is a major part of uh -huh. humanity. And uh -huh. so um, I, I know I have, a, <laughs> I, agree. I have a younger I agree. cousin. I have a cousin who's quite young. And, okay. you know, she's an investment banker, you know, financial advisor and what have you. And so recently she posted something about um, how do you want to make so much returns you see, because sometimes they entice, um, they entice people, they entice people with some of these returns. And so you see someone telling you that you would invest a certain amount and then in three months you're getting 40% return on what you, on 100,000. It's too good to be real. And we also need to understand that Those because it's greed. At the end of yes. the day, you begin to ask yourself, are you not a thief? 
<laughs> why do you want to sow from where you did not? We should ask ourselves those questions sometimes. Why do you want to you know? sow from where you did not reap? Mm -hmm. That's so much. Money doesn't even work that way. So at all. it's 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 at a all. lot. It's a lot for us to understand. But I wish that we learned from all of these experiences. Well, you see, every other time, mm. it's um, the fact that you see that Nigerians are some Nigerians are gullible because you can't say all, and then we constantly, and including the ones that are very intelligent, Educated. very, I mean, well schooled. They went to some of the best schools. <laughs> you will be shocked. So. <laughs> But we need to do a lot when it has to do with investment and, and financial education. So we need to understand that how money works and, you know, the way money works. The money doesn't work the way we look at it, really. And that's to be very honest. So you feel that someone comes with a business proposal and tell you that in, in a month you're going to be making, you invest like 200,000, you're going to be making like one point something million. You should ask yourself, how? So there, there are a lot of investigation. You need to do your due diligence. And I also think that, you know, to protect the people as well, the government needs to also step up. I know that you have several um, bodies that have been, you know, activated or, I mean, established by the government to protect people. For instance, you have the SEC and all of that. But people, we need to wake up. We cannot say that we're smart people and every other time we see how gullible people we are. People just fall prey. We constantly fall prey for you know, look at the young ladies, swindle <laughs> people and take the money. And and it, this is what's going on. So after this, you're still going to have another Ponzi scheme. And a lot of people Messi, will invest. It, Messi, it goes on and on. Like you said, we the, 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 the culture of poverty, uh, greed, again, greed <laughs> again. It's, it's not because <laughs> maybe, okay, I'm an accountant. I, I studied accounting. So maybe I understand them, the laws of finance and the returns on, in, on investment and all of that. You know, when you get such um, proposals, investment proposals, and they tell you that you're supposed to be making uh, 50, 70, even 200% from investment, you should ask some pertinent questions. Okay, on what basis would those returns be coming from? Okay, you're asked to uh, invest them. 10,000, 100,000 into an investment and you get um, 20 million. Okay, what is going to bring that profit? Uh, how fast, uh, how lucrative is the business? Most people don't ask questions. So no, 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 they don't. They're and, just yeah, like, like, wow, so 100 million in three months. Like, whoa, they just fall hook, line, and sinker. And Justin, it's also on that particular culture. There's a culture of the, you know, quick fix. Mm -hmm. You know, get it, get quick, get rich quick. Yes. The, that's rich scheme. Of course, we live in a time where everything is on the fast. So you have the instant noodles. You have uh, everything on the instant. <laughs> fast immediately, lane. Fast lane. And so mm. everybody wants to make fast cash. And, you know, in the street words would say, I want to blow and all of that. But it brings us back to asking, like you have rightly mentioned, you know, the very right question. And we need to understand uh, you know how money actually works. Ask several questions. If you can't, you if you can't ask, I'm sure that there are a lot of experts that you can consult. Mm -hmm. So before you throw your money into any investment, if Some you cannot even take go the decision, to borrow. then you can. It doesn't even make sense. Why do you even have to borrow to invest? Greed, like you said. So uh, it, it's a lot. I have seen a lot of people who have invested millions and billions of naira into some of the schemes, and at the end of the day, they begin to begin to cry, you know, foul and begin to say, "Oh, we have been defrauded." But we need to do well as a people. We need to be responsible for our action. We need to wake up. We can't constantly allow people just for the sake of we wanting to make money. And what happens? Because I was taught in elementary, basic commerce and you know business studies that some people don't pay attention to the little returns now people think that you have to make you know at a goal the profit has to be so high so imagine that you're making like one naira on every item that you're mm -hmm. selling people don't want to go that particular route mm -mm. so everybody so you have a cop so let's say you're selling this mug in front of us now and then probably you you know the profit might just be five naira so mm. imagine that you sell the more you sell the um, how much five naira you would you be getting but people don't want that so return somebody wants an investment where you're throwing and you know, this whatever amount you invested in the mug and then you have to sell, then you're making like, you know, 20,000 already, 50,000, and that's a lot. So we need, we need to just take it easy. Messi, I feel also, so sorry we, for those who have been swindled. Yes, but we also have to talk about, uh, you know, she is a uh, Facebook, this issue of influencing <laughs> and influencers. A whole lot of people, you know, follow her. They believe that uh, she's like a role model, that she's young, she's made so much for herself. And most of the times, if we do our investigation, we'll find out that these so-called influencers most of them are criminals. Most of them, they're not exactly who they portray themselves to be. 
Facebook influencers, I, I, and that's Instagram why, and influencers. That, and that's why you have, you know, the need for, for background checks. I saw a couple mm -hmm. of blogs uh, putting out um, some kind of posts that described it in a certain way. And I totally would understand the grievances or the grievance of some of these persons who have probably would have actually reported mm -hmm. to this blog. But does it mm -hmm. change anything? Like I would say, we have had several Ponzi schemes in this country. And it doesn't feel like we have learned anything. No, Even when the government will actually come and tell you, oh, don't do this. Tomorrow you see. You put ten era. <laughs> the next day some people will come. Might be NNN this time around or PPP or something. And you just see people. No, but you we know, need to we can we can constantly so for for you to make an investment i mean if even if you cannot take that decision someone brings a business proposal to you and you can't take that decision i'm sure that there are people around your circle your network your network that you can actually reach out to and ask the right question and even if it requires you paying someone an expert because you have people who are whose responsibility i yes. mean that's your job pay an investment banker or you know investment yes. specialist or whatever you call them and let them tell you you know, what you need to do before you throw in that chunk of money, and then we will be feeling And screaming blue you. mother. Mm. Mm. We need to move away from this Yes, now. we move. Like I said, when we started the show, you know, someone literally painted the city of Oire green. Now, you're, you're, look, you're very dramatic. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and because she's one of my favorite actresses, and... Uh, she got married yesterday. Mercy, you remember the bridal shower where lots of um, her friends were around to just, uh, you know, encourage her and, of course, to wish her. But this time around, uh, just yesterday, Rita Dominic tied the knot with her boo, Anos, okay? And it was so colorful. It was so wonderful. She looked radiant. She looked angelic. She looked divine. I could use several Adjectives to qualify how she looked yesterday, Mercy. Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> so that's someone's bride or someone's wife, right? There. Yes, but she is our own so, Rita so, Dominic. So this is just an example of how Nigerians felt yesterday. I mean, the way Justin is feeling this morning. Yes, I'm happy this, for yeah. her. <laughs> you need to see the smile on his face and the fact that a he's big smile. I'm really, smiling. I'm really in with joy here. And that's to show you that yesterday, I, I don't think there was any slander of Rita Dominic you know, on the internet, you know, constantly having all of the beautiful photos and all of that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are very um, excited about these and are really happy. I mean, you could see that the traditional marriage, uh, it In was Emo another State. movie. Uh, you could see the crowd. I mean, you know, it was really, really, all of the pictures. And the group videos. just so, dancing, having a wonderful moment. Now, interesting is the fact that, you know, Anosike is also, I mean, he's the CEO, right? Yeah, he's, he's a, a CEO journalist. He's a, yeah, uh, he's a journalist as yeah. well. So, I mean, so it feels like, you know, um, that, that's a win. I don't know. That's on a lighter note. Though. <laughs> but congratulatory messages, goodwill messages yeah, has been poured out by uh, people from different parts of it. Like I, I enjoyed. I, there are lots of beautiful pictures. Dramatic. I'm still dancing. Though. I'm still relieving the <laughs> and, moment uh, from for yesterday. For me, one of the things that stands out yes. for me, Rita Dominic, is that, you know, in all of this, if you follow her career path and everything, not so much of a scandal around mm -hmm. her. You know, she has comported herself very well. And she, she has been fantastic. It's good to see her, you know, settle Finally, down. Finally, you know, trying and, to and, not. You know, After a, fine, a lot of people have said time. different things about her. Most people like, uh, she, uh, wish, will she ever get married? And uh, the time is no longer on her side. You know, but then she had always been a very calm, collected person. No scandals. She... Uh, it's not like everywhere, like some actresses or actors, are, and uh, she keeps to herself most of the time. And um, she is someone who, you know, just takes her time and uh, talks when she should talk. She's not like everyone who, you know, has a comment or a post to make on each uh, issue that is really trending. And she has stayed off scandal. And finally, she tied the knot, and I just wish her the best of marital bliss, Rita Dominic. Okay, <laughs> so that's it. And that's how Nigerians are feeling right now, yes. including myself. Um, congratulations to Rita Dominic and uh, Anosike. We wish them the very, very best. And we wish them, you know, a blissful marital life from us here. Yes, from all of us here at uh, Plus TV Africa. Let's leave Rita and her boo for one moment. Another interesting thing is actually trending again. Mercy, imagine a lot of people have complained about uh, getting all sorts of uh, wrong debt. I mean, uh, Mercy, it's almost two weeks old. I, I was debited, no cash was dispensed. My money had not been returned. I should go and start dancing in front of the, the bank with a, a live band. So, so um, 
<laughs> you see, I think that at some point, you know, yeah. everyone has been part of this system. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, you can all relate it, it to took this. me, I mean, last week, I would also share mine. I, mm. I bank with the certain bank uh, for the fact of, you know, publicity. There's no need to put that. So you, you actually go to a spot and then you're making a transaction. Maybe you're using the ATM. Mm -hmm. uh, you're trying to use your ATM at the machine, at the mm -hmm. spot where you're supposed to get phones. Or you probably go to a store and you're supposed to make payments via the POS. And sometimes you find out that most times, in my case, I was debited and I wasn't credited. And mm. So it doesn't even make sense because your money is in limbo. The money is not in your account. You have been debited. And the other party is saying, we haven't gotten any you credit. You have done payment. So it calls for a lot of consent. Then mm -hmm. you have to go to your bank. Of course, the bank had not been in session up until yesterday. Mm -hmm. And then the bank would tell you it takes eight working days <laughs> to, you know, reverse the money. I'm wondering if it means you're going. And you understand the times that we're in. A lot of people are going through the so much. Lot. And mm -hmm. you, you, you don't really understand why you see someone getting very agitated because of a thousand naira. That and might be just say, the, why the, you getting only angry? That it's just 2,000 naira. And that might just be, so you, you have no idea. I think that the banks need to do better. This is where you begin to ask yourself, what happens to the consumer protection, uh, mm. is, it, is it the commission yeah, that's the been called? They have the yeah. So you, you have several bodies. Are we even living up to expectation? What is even really going on? For me, for instance, um, just like every other person, I mean, why do you tell me that it takes eight working days to <laughs> Return to my revert money. a transaction. Why? Does, does it mean that you have to go to space, you know, to do something to the moon before the money comes I back? Have I don't understand the, the technicality yes. around it. I think that the banks need to do better, need to understand, you know, the situation that a lot of persons are faced with. Um, because there are several conspiracy theories, there are several people who have proven that, that, you know, it's just the means, and it's a sort of an undertone of fraud, fraud, where people, these banks just act in this way so that people can just give up, they get frustrated, and then they let the money go. I, I'm not Most sure that that's something. Do, because of not, all the Not stress. in all cases, yeah. yes. But, I mean, we need to do better. This is where all relevant bodies, everyone, we need to begin to check the excesses of these banks. It's okay for someone like me. I don't even keep tabs with all of those Some charges. Some people don't. And you know how much so they you, make from I, the I little don't even monies. Know the, so I'm saying just charges. 100 naira, just 200 naira. But it goes you beyond. know the bulk of uh, millions they get out of the whole thing. It's not even just about the POS transactions or maybe uh, a web, um, web payment or ATM transaction. Sometimes you just see also all sort of debits in your account. You'll be wondering, okay, uh, I didn't make this transaction. How come I'm getting this debit? They will give you one... Um, uh, convoluted charge that it might be something, you know, uh, uh, they'll say it's an a ATM, a maintenance fee, and sometimes you don't even have ATM on that particular account, and you're getting debits on that particular, you've not done any transaction with your ATM card, you know, maybe for a month or two, and you're still getting maintenance, you know. So most of these things, I know, have to be brought to the fore. The Bankers Committee, the FCCPC, you know, those in charge, because Mercy had said it, it doesn't really make sense uh, giving someone 8 to 15 working days to reverse a transaction. That money might be a 1,000, that might be 2,000, uh, that might just be the only money that person has to go by for that particular period. And then when you take it away from him and he can't get it after two weeks, some people might not even know just where to turn to to even get the next meal. Mm. So, um, so the bankers, I mean, or the banks, or the, this institution, financial institution, uh, I, I'm thinking that we need to do better. We need to step up the game and protect, you know, our consumers who, of course, not necessarily Nigerians because you have others who are leaving. But we are living in a, such a difficult time. And there's a lot that's going on. So in the 21st century, you ask yourself, why do we even have to go through all of this stress? I don't know if you understand. That's mm -hmm. At some point, you ask yourself, are we even ready for this uh, sort of banking uh, we're saying that we're going into online banking. There's some things that you should be able to solve without having to go to the bank. For instance, there is no reason, or, you know, that you should actually walk to a bank and begin to ask that um, your you phone should, should be reversed. reversed. Right. It, there should be, you know, way you that can it can be solved for yes. real. Honestly, without people having to interface with the bank. We live in a time where we're supposed to be, you know, developing and moving and finding ways to solve problems using technology mm -hmm. and I easing agree. the stress of the people. People, making it very easy for banking. So one would talk about smooth banking, but that's not the case here. So it's really, you know, stressful. I know that for some people, they can't really take it. And so sometimes you walk into a banking hall, you see someone acting very rascal, or somebody <laughs> acting out of, you know, 
the normal way they should behave and you're wondering why is this person acting this way. There's a lot of frustration, bitterness and anger. <laughs> and that's because, you know, times are quite difficult and hard very, for a lot of people. Very, very difficult. And people are you know, growing doing a lot on economic you know, to hardship. survive. So the banks would rather do better than, you know, causing more troubles for those customers. And yes. that's what it would be. But we're also asking that please government should not throw their arms, you know, fold their arms and watch the people suffer, intervene and check the excesses of these banks and the activities. Yes, yeah, so, so I, well, I'm not trying to like, um, you know, hold the, or, or take brief. The, the brief for the guy who went about it, the live band in front of that particular <laughs> he, band. He must, but be, then he he must was, be your brother. Uh, he was just, he was like, he because was letting them have it really because, uh, <laughs> He just couldn't stand it anymore, <laughs> you know. But then, Messi has said there's a whole lot of, uh, you know, new things we could do with this particular, you know, technology and all of that. For instance, uh, it used to take like um, three, four days, uh, you know, to clear a check, but now you can do that after a day or so. Let's also try to do this with our turnaround maintenance or transaction, financial transaction in the bank. If I have a debit that was wrongfully made on my account, ordinarily within the day, within a 30 minutes or thereabout, I should have my money reversed. Even if uh, maybe some issue with NIBS or a NIBS downtown or downtime, I should get um, a reversal at least the next day, but not to tell me eight days or sometimes. They'll tell you eight working days or mercy, that's like um, two weeks old. So don't calculate Monday to Saturday or Monday. <laughs> mercy, Monday to Friday, that's five days. You have to wait again for the next week before you now get um, you know, settlement. It is really not what we should be talking about. So banks, NIBs, FCCPC, Bankers Committee, uh, do something about these little infractions we have in our financial system. That's all we can take on Top Trend, and we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll go straight to Off the Press in a moment. It's The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. <laughs> 